What up, Internet? I'm Young Guru, and welcome back to The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. In the last episode, we got to the bridge. Now let's cross it. Red Creek Valley seemed like a quiet, ordinary place. I've learned two things in my life. No place is truly quiet, and nowhere is really ordinary. Ethan warned me about that. Warned me not to be fooled by what I saw here. He didn't need to worry. I'd worked dozens of cases, hundreds. This would be my last one. Paul Prospero. A man that has seen some shit in his life. This is... Downright gorgeous. Looks like we got a... Uh, a dam over there, maybe? Or maybe just a... Uh, no, probably a dam. I'm, I'm gonna go with that. Danger. Nothing really back that way. Now, what do we got going on here? Old little train caboosey thing. Wood. little bit of investigation. Crank? Can we crank? No cranking. Ooh, enter. Is that a thing I want to do? Turn off. Okay, that doesn't seem to be doing anything useful. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Looks like it needs some, uh... Some power of some sort. Whoa! A bit of blood here. Oh, that's cool. It's like his thoughts going off. Crankshaft. Uh, whoa. Oh, cool. Showing us where this is. Now, there's the dam. Right. Let's go find us a crank, I guess. So it's going to be down by the water on the right. Which would be that way. So, hi-ho, we go this way. Seeing too much over here. Let's go down this way. Follow this path. So, as I initially intrigued by this game, kind of its noir sensibilities. And its similarities in, I guess, theme, maybe, to Alan Wake, which is a favorite game of mine. What do we got? 
What are these? It's ropes. Cut ties. Untied, tied. No blood. Okay, I don't seem to be able to do anything with that. What the... Ooh! Oh, this got real. What in the... Oh, that's a boot. Oh, shit. Yeah, where's the rest of the body? Yeah, it's got real, real. I'll follow this this way. To oh, there's the rest of it. Oh, there it is. Blood from legs, blood from fractured skull. Blood loss, cause of death, head trauma. Touch. Hmm. Not yet. Death scene, disturbed by third party. Eroded by time. Yeah, I think that has something to do with his power. If I remember reading a review correctly, you gotta reassemble the crime scene, as it were, uh, to recreate the situation that the body was in. And then you can speak with it or commune with it in some mysterious way. You know, there's some sort of structure over there. Gently climb down. Right, there's the the dam. At least what I'm calling the dam. Should have a crank leaning against a rock. What is that graphical artifact or is that blood? Look like blood. I can't do anything with it. Can I? Can I step into the water? That's really cool looking water too. Ah, okay, you're limited. Can't go too deep. Not like Esther, where you can just wade out into the water and just give up. Ah, there you are. Okay, so we're not going to get any description of that item other than crank. Run back over this way into the brightly colored foliage. Oh, part of me is concerned I'm moving on to the next area. cut back. I feel like I want to go back to that crime scene. Get on the other side of that collapsed avalanche. Oh, it's a MOA. Plus culture for all tiles surrounding it. For those of you that didn't know, we're playing Sid Meier's The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. Ooh, toolbox. Toolbox? Gasoline? What are you? Gas can. 
Diesel fuel, gasoline. Dropped carelessly in a rush on purpose. Canister. Dried grass. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, game. I don't know if you could possibly get here without the rail car. Or at least having walked by it. Okay, that's just hovering around where it is. Not really indicating anything specific. What else we got going on here? Is there a collapse? It's just like an abandoned town. By town, I just mean like abandoned completely. Not even a town, just an entire area. It's a cool, cool setting. Hearing creaky noises. We got fog. Oh man. I hope the audio comes through well. Uh, this eerie, kind of like groaning and creaking of wood. Okay, there's that dumpster or whatnot. So an alternative way to get to the other side. Are you a trap? I need these branches. Huh. Just lighting. Thick foliage that we're tromping through. Hiding in the grass like a predator. Ah, oh, back into the sunlight. Can we climb out of here? No, okay, this seems to be our dead end. Something over here? Something caught my eye. It's just a stone. Hmm. Oh! What are you? going on here. This dude's like teleporting about. What? Are you over here? There you are. Am I chasing him or just following him? I don't want to scare you, man. Oh, what? I did. I was not expecting to see another living soul in this game. Where are you taking me? Are you real? Or are you just fictitious? You are. Side of them. There you are. 
Where are you taking me? Oh, what? Oh, what? just got holy lord this got real burning up through the atmosphere oh going through like a wormhole holy lord it's just entered like the twilight zone it's delightfully unexpected. Can I zoom? I can zoom. Oh, there's another orb. Another one. Two, three, four. Oh, these are everywhere. Do I have control? Oh, I can move up to the windows. so we can see <sighs> extraterrestrial containment capsule number 86911 oh read Fangs. The beast had fangs, but was heavy and slow. So when it saw the light in the sky, it waited, thinking the light would go out, like the others before it. When it did not, the beast rose up on its legs and went to the place where the fire was still burning. As the orange light died, another took its place. This one was blue a bright and pure blue that the creature had only seen along the edges of the stars. The beast showed its fangs and the light vanished. A moment later the light appeared again between two distant trees. The beast wanted to go home but could not ignore the light, so it chased it deeper into the forest. When the light stopped, it did so in a clearing of trees. The beast entered the circle, feeling no fear. The trees turned toward the beast, pointing at it like needles. But the tops of the trees lowered and dug into the ground. The trunks and root were raised into the air and closed around the beast like walls. As the ground disappeared, the beast realized it would never use its fangs again. Huh. It's like us. We just... Get out of my room, Travis! Stories, stories, always with the stories. Get out! I read the Fangs one. I liked uh, the Beast. At least he gets to leave this goddamn place. Whoa. Whoa! Or in, like, the contained room instead of a alien teleporter. Okay. It's the same fangs. What do we got here? Gaylord. Oh, God. Abstruse Tales, America's Finest Science Fiction, January 1964. Featuring Yellow Hills of Mars by Douglas Spaulding. Plus, Julian West, Clarence Carlyle, Michael Arden and many others. Nothing really on the back. Okay, just text of what's going on there. We. Okay, that's just like, I not worn with age, I guess. <laughs> oh my lord! 
That was that was incredible. And with that, let's end this episode. I'm Young Guru. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you next time.